It soon becomes clear when reading John chapter 6 that there is something very different about Jesus. When he and the disciples were tired and needed some rest, Jesus didn't send the crowds who were pestering him away. He responded to them with compassion. When the crowds were hungry, Jesus didn't calculate how many days' wages it would take to feed them. He looked with compassion upon them and he looked to heaven for a miracle. And when the crowd set about to take him by force and to make him king, Jesus simply withdrew to the mountain by himself. And so we come to today and the verses we have from John chapter 6. Jesus describes himself as the bread of life. And in the verses that follows, he offers himself to be consumed so that we might live. Again, something very different is going on here. Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus actually talked a lot about bread. He taught us to pray for our daily bread. He said that he was the living bread and on the night before he died, he took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And all these references to bread and the life and Jesus and the Eucharist, they're all undoubtedly linked. The earliest Christian writers, almost without exception, said that the daily bread for which we pray in the Lord's Prayer is in fact the body of Christ received in the Eucharist. So praying for our daily bread is not just about praying for all that we need physically, but it's about praying for the grace we need to get by, for spiritual sustenance, for healing, for comfort and for strength. St Jerome thought that our daily bread referred to the bread of heaven like the manna in the wilderness and said that in the Lord's Prayer we were praying for the bread that we will enjoy at that great banquet at the end of time. Fourth century translations of the Gospels into Syriac talked about the bread that doesn't run out, the lasting, never ceasing, never ending, perpetual bread. One of the deepest and most crippling fears of the human spirit is the fear of not having enough to make life possible. The writer Kenneth Bailey said, I am convinced that at the heart of the Lord's Prayer, Jesus teaches his disciples a prayer that means, Deliver us, O Lord, from the fear of not having enough to eat. Give us bread for today, and with it give us confidence that tomorrow we will have enough. So Jesus is our living bread. He gives us the grace we need to get by. He sustains us spiritually. He heals us, comforts us and strengthens us. And he says in the verses that follow our reading today that those who eat his flesh and drink his blood abide in him and he in them. Abiding is about committing to stay in a place or with someone. It has to do with solidarity, presence and perseverance. It's a really powerful word, but it's a word we don't use very often. Ben Quash wrote in his book Abiding that abiding is not a word we have much use for in ordinary conversation. You wouldn't say, for example, oh, just abide here for a minute while I pop into the newsagents, or she abode with me until the train arrived. It is a word more suited to Victorian hymnody, along with phrases like fast falls the eventide. But it's not a word that we can easily find substitutes for either, because wait or stick around don't quite catch it. Abiding has more the sense of a full personal commitment. It expresses a quality of solidarity which just waiting would never convey. Something like the widowed Ruth's wonderful words in her mother in, to her mother-in-law. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people should be my people and your God my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me and more as well if even death parts me from you. So Jesus promises to abide with us if we eat his flesh and drink his blood. All this must have sounded very strange, not least to the disciples, let alone the crowds. But as Jesus instituted the Last Supper and gave us not just a memorial meal, but a means of being fully present, us with him and he with us, then it all begins to make sense. And it tells us that no matter what, no matter what, Jesus stays with us, perseveres with us, lives in us, abides with us. So Jesus is the bread of life. He is the daily bread for which we ask. He gives us the grace we need to get by. He sustains us spiritually. He heals us, comforts us and strengthens us. 
and he abides in us and we abide with him. That is true communion. But in our communion, in our Eucharist, we affirm not just that Jesus is the living bread, but also that the bread is somehow Jesus. The deprivations we have suffered over the last 18 months have included for many being deprived of the sacrament. Last week I took communion with someone in their home who'd not shared in a Eucharist since last November. Whatever we make of the holy mystery of the Eucharist, we know that something is going on in the taking and blessing and breaking of bread. Something is going on that strengthens us and gives us life. Back in 1890, there was a national competition to replace the rather clumsy name, the Smith's Patent Process Germ Flower, with a new catchy name, and a prize of £25 was offered to the winner. The winner was Herbert Grime, who suggested the name Hovis from the Latin hominis vis, meaning the strength of man. Somehow Jesus, the bread of life, strengthens and sustains us by the gift of nothing less than himself. He is our strength. And as I com contemplate these things, I find myself drawn back to a wonderful book by Geoffrey Howard called Dare to Break Bread. In the late 80s and early 90s, Geoffrey Howard was a priest in inner city Salford. And in his book, he interweaves reflections on that ministry with his thoughts while on retreat at Charles de Foucault's hermitage in the Algerian mountains. At one point, he says this, I hold the bread in my hand and see there the God who created, sustains and saves the world. I see food for the hungry, strength for the weak, power for the powerless. I'm not bothered whether bread has become body or whether it remains plain bread. Let the theologians argue. Those issues are as sterile as the stones of this place. All I know is that I look at bread, but see God. As I said at the start, it soon becomes clear when reading John chapter 6 that there is something very different about Jesus, something utterly unique. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. And the crowd said to Jesus, Sir, Lord, Master, give us this bread always. Amen.